بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear brothers and my sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله As this is the month of April we have so many festives going on here from the people of the book The Christians have Easter to celebrate and the Jews also have Passover to celebrate. We've heard of these celebrations so many times, but many of us do not have a clear idea as to what they are. And do they actually relate to Islam or not? How can we behave with the non-Muslims, the Jews and the Christians? Can we tell them happy Easter, happy Passover? If not, why not? And if yes, why yes? That's because we humans, or the children of Adam السلام, our father, we are a beautiful species that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored and beautified us. We are powerful, intelligent, and utterly clever species. And we have proven endless times that we can think for ourselves and we can build new tribes, new communities, new countries, new nations, and we are social people. And along with these communities that we build and peoples that we gather, we humans have always loved to celebrate events and celebrations. As we have grown in number, we scattered around the earth and we developed different customs and cultures. We also responded to the innate needs in us to worship a divinity or a god. Some people worship the cosmos, the moon, the sun, the stars, Venus, Jupiter, what have you. While others worship animals, tigers, snakes, rats, monkeys, cows, and you have it. Then there are those who find that much needed spirituality in adoring and worshiping humans like Buddha, Pharaoh, and different types of other goddesses that they establish for themselves like Nike and so on and so forth. The way we are today as humans is unbelievable. Intelligence, emotional, we are savvy, we are sassy, we are clever and everything. And you would think that with the intellect that we have developed now and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has graced us with, that we humans can come up to certain things like we believe in same belief. Look in the world here. Why does that person there believe that worshipping a cow is good for them, while the other one believes that worshipping a tiger is good for them? Is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us as humans? But actually, that is not true. Because our creator and our maker has sent us messengers, prophets, to guide us all. Yes, he will not send anyone new today. But he left it to the rest of mankind to do the job of preaching the message to others. Jewish people do it. Christian people do it. Muslim do it as well. It is really an ironical belief that mankind can unify one day and become a single body. Even some Muslim preachers, they say one day Islam will rule the whole earth. Everybody one day will be united. And that day will never, ever come. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Hud, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ And if your Lord so ever wished, he would have made the people a single nation. All of us, the entire of humanity, one single nation. And then he says in the meaning, and they shall continue to disagree and differ amongst them, except those whom your Lord bestows his mercy upon. And it is for that that he created them. He created us not to disagree, but he created us to receive his mercy. But we refuse to receive the mercy of unity from Allah by disagreeing and just having our differences and then fight for them. So as you can see here, Allah has made it clear that it is his will that mankind shall be in tribes and nations. 
each people, my dear brothers and my sisters, has received their guidance. How? Only Allah knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْهَاجًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا in the nearest translation, it says, to each of you, we prescribed a law and a method, i.e. to apply that law. And had Allah willed, he would have made you one nation, i.e. all united in one religion. So why didn't Allah unite us all together? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test us in what he has given us. And then he says, so raise each other to goodness, i.e. compete with each other to achieve as much goodness as you can. And then he says, because at the end of the day, To Allah, your return shall be all together. And he will then inform you about that which you used to defer or differentiate or argue or disagree on. And this is very clear, my dear brothers and my sisters, that no matter how much we do, humanity will never stand united. Unless we get attacked by some aliens from outer space, we will always disagree with each other, we will always fight what we believe is the truth, and such is the destiny of man. We Muslims, we have our festivals or our celebrations, we have the Eid, Christians, they have different of them. And the Jews also have other different as well. But because we are in England, I will be speaking about Easter. I want to introduce to you Easter. What is Easter? What does the bunny and the egg have to do with Easter? And also, because we speak about Easter, Easter is tightly tied to another celebration or festival, and that is the Passover of the Jews. So how much do we know about the Passover of the Jews? But subhanAllah, in this talk here, I will explain and you will have a better understanding about this uh, festival, inshallah. Also, I would strongly recommend that you listen to this talk with your children because it's going to be very, very informative. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a law and a method to apply for everyone so that they can apply it in their lives. The people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, are closer to us Muslims than anyone else, as I said before. So Easter and Passover, the Passover is the celebration of the Jews, Easter is the celebration of the Christians. And they both evolve around the two noble messengers, Passover, about Moses or Musa and the children of Israel, and Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi and ala Musa, and our prophet and all the prophets, as salatu and as salam. Since Jesus, son of Mary, was a Jew, this is, or this fact here, is widely accepted by every Jewish people out there. But since the Jews reject the prophecy of Jesus, they do not celebrate Easter at all. However, they celebrate another festival called the Passover which coincides with Easter, and that is for historical reasons, as we shall see. So, what is the Passover holiday? The Passover is a spring festival to celebrate the liberation of the children of Israel by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from slavery in Egypt, when they were under uh, the boots of Fir'aun, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa to liberate and take the children of Israel out of Egypt. The two versions, the one that the Jews believe in and what we believe in, will differentiate in the subject of the matter, how it happened, and Passover speaks about their version. It is also very important to mention here that since Passover is about when the children of Israel ran away and they crossed the sea, our Ashura is a little bit not in synchronicity with them, because to them, in these days, is when that event took place, when for us Ashura took place months ago. In other terms, this is the story of the Exodus, as described in the Torah, or the Torah, or the Hebrew Bible. Passover is a celebration that continues for seven days, and it starts from the 15th till the 21st of 
April. Since Passover is the time where our cousins, the Jews, celebrate the safeguard of Musa, alayhi salam, and the children of Israel, as history has it, it is also in the Quran. The holiday is called Passover because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the nine signs or miracles, the children of Israel say there are ten. But anyway, in one of them, or the last one of them, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the angel of death to take the firstborn of the Egyptians, the angel of death passed over the houses of the children of Israel and didn't take the life of any of them. So when they say the Passover, that is the passing over of the angel to take the firstborn of the Egyptians, but not of the children of Israel. And for your pure entertainment and education, this year, 2017, the Passover started from the 10th of April and will go on for seven days and nights. So right now, as I'm recording this, the Passover is taking place around the world. As mentioned in the Torah, the ten plagues, or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to Fir'aun so that he liberates the children of Israel, in the Torah they call them plagues. In Al-Quran, we call them signs. They say the number one is the water that turned into blood. And yes, Al-Islam says water that turned into blood. Two, frogs. And we also have frogs as well. Number three, Allah sent on them lies. And Al-Quran says, yes, lies were sent on them. Four, wild animals. And we have the snake of Musa, a.s. Number five, the cattle died. And the cattle sickness and disease also are mentioned in Al-Quran. Number six, the boils or the flood as it is also in Al-Quran. Number seven, the hail. But we do not know that about the hair. We don't have that except Musa salam's hand turning into white. But the Quran didn't mention any hail at all. Number eight, locusts on these like mantis insects that fly. And in the Quran also there is those animals as well. Number nine, the darkness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spread on them. And for us, yes, there is also the darkening in the Quran. Number 10, which they have and we do not have, and the Passover is because of number 10, is the killing of the firstborn. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention that in Al-Quran, and the Passover is the celebration for that. So how is the Passover celebrated? Passover is both the most celebrated Jewish holiday of the year, and at the same time also, it is the holiday voted most likely to elicit a groan and a moan and complaining from the Jews themselves. And that is because of the much efforts that go into the preparation. Intense preparations, eatings, and protocols that take place every night and all the overeating that goes with it. But the real irony behind the moaning, groaning, and the hair pulling and complaining is that this is exactly what the Jews are supposed to feel at this time of the year. Passover is a celebration of spring, a celebration of birth and rebirth, of a journey from slavery to freedom, and of taking responsibility for yourself, the community, and the world. This is the belief for the Passover for them, children of Israel. Strangely enough, none of this taking responsibility gets done without groaning and moaning. It was with groaning that the Hebrews expressed the pain of their ancient enslavement in Egypt more than 3,300 years ago. A Torah states that the Jews are to observe Passover for seven continuous days, beginning from the 15th of the Jewish month Nisan or April. In the preparation of the dinners, because in the seven days, every night is a different setting protocol, foods they eat, the way they eat, and all that kind of stuff. But in their celebration, because I'm speaking of those close elements that are found in Easter and Passover, and the very first one of the two are the eggs. So what is the relationship of the egg and the Passover? The egg in Jewish, subhanAllah, it's called Baidza. And in Arabic, it's Baidah. So it's very close to each other. For the first and second night's dinner, for the Passover, 
a very special and well-prepared plate of different foods acts as the focal point of the proceedings. The plate contains six ceremonial foods around which the cedar is based. So the dinner is called the cedar uh, dinner. One of them is the egg. The hard-boiled egg represents the pre-holiday offering that was brought in the days of the Holy Temple. So before the celebration starts on that time there, they would start by preparing the eggs. But what does the eggs really stand in the Hebrew Passover? Well, with the Aramaic word for the egg is baya, just they miss the da, baila, which is similar to the Aramaic word for desire. So what they is, they say, it is expressing that this was the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desired to redeem the Jews. Because the word desire means baya, and the egg is baitza. So they say when we eat the egg, it reminds us of Allah's desire to save the children of Israel from Pharaoh. Also, it has other meanings. When Jewish people left Egypt, they were just like an unhatched egg. They were fragile and still had nothing. They were just dressed, but they had nowhere to go, no place to live in. To them, when inside the chicken, when the egg is inside the chicken, it was constrained. And they link that to how the children of Israel were in Egypt. It was a big prison for them. On Passover, Jews emerged from the confines of Egypt, like the egg that drops out of the hen. Also, only when at Sinai, when they were on the Mount of Sinai, that is then when they felt they were born again. And it was about 40 nights later when Allah gave Musa a Torah that the children of Israel felt fully hatched and there were something for them in this life after all. So as you can see, the egg has got the meaning of the birth and rebirth for the children of Israel. And this is why they have it in the night, first night and second night of their Passover in the plate of Seder. Before delving into the Easter festival and talk about it in depth, it is really, really worth mentioning that the Bible has only mentioned Easter once only. And that is in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 4. Easter, my dear brothers and my sisters, is a long four days event which starts with Good Friday. And I will explain later on what Good Friday stands for. And then there is the Holy Saturday, and there is Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. Like its Jewish counterpart, Easter is a Christian feast day, i.e. to eat food and celebrate. The Easter days are significant days in the life of Jesus, son of Mary. Unlike any other Christian celebration or festive, Easter feast days, the Easter itself, are movable because they follow the lunar calendar, subhanAllah, and that is to stay with the Passover of the Jews. There are times when you want to make decisions, and decisions is what you want to make. So, which day shall Easter fall? Where? And that is, again, because it follows the lunar calendar, it moves every year by the 10 days that we all know. But at the beginning of Christianity, things were not like this. In the year 325, that is 1,692 years ago, there was a emperor called Constantine. He called on a council of Christian bishops, and he convened them and brought them together to decide what the church would preach and teach people. They wanted to unify the vision of the church as a whole. And this happened 325 years after the ascension of Jesus, son of Mary, salam. Pretty much almost like we Muslims, what we did with the hadith and so on and so forth. It was in this first council that the Easter day was decided that it should fall on the first full moon after the spring equinox. Like when you change the time. And that it, i.e. Easter, should always fall on Sunday to represent the day of Christ's resurrection. That's what it is for them. 
I'll just say the things like that, okay, without putting my belief in. I'll just tell you what it is they believe in. In its simplest form, my dear brothers and my sisters, Easter is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus after his alleged crucifixion. Because as you know, that they say that Jesus was crucified on a Friday, on a Juma. And that's why they call it a Good Friday. Because the Jews call it Good Friday because they got rid of a liar. But it's uh, funny that the Christian should call the day where their Savior or their God, whatever who is, that is, got uh, murdered on a Friday. They call it uh, a Good Friday. It should be a Black Friday. It should be the saddest Friday ever. But uh, when I once had a discussion with a priest, he said that's because uh, when the Son of God died, that was a whole really happy day for us. I mean, Allah knows well what it is, but in, in, in case. But anyway, so the Christian believed that Jesus was crucified on a Good Friday and rose again three days later. But mathematically, it doesn't stand. Because if he was crucified on a Juma Friday, Sunday would be the second day, not the third day. And this discrepancy here has always been there, but nobody pays attention to it because as soon as you go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you get three with your hands. But if you count hours to hours, let's say, okay, if Jesus was crucified at 1 p.m. on a Friday, Saturday 1 p.m. is one day, Sunday 1 p.m. is two days, the resurrection should have taken place on a Monday, not on a Sunday. But in any way, these three days are known as the Easter Tridom. The Easter season, my dear brothers and my sisters, begin on an Ash Wednesday. And that is what it opens the Lent. The Lent is the 40 days fast of the Christians that they observe. It is a season of fasting and prayer. The Lent starts 40 days before the Easter celebration. So what is this Ash Wednesday? Well, as history has it, it comes from an ancient Jewish tradition of penance and fasting. The practice included, includes the wearing of ashes on the head. The ashes symbolize the dust from which Allah created us. In the Christian world, when the priest applies the ash to a person's forehead because they wet them and they apply them as a cross, he speaks the words. So as the, priest, uh, as the priest puts the ashes on the forehead of a Catholic or a Christian, the priest says this, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Amazing, amazing. It's short of amazing, subhanAllah. He also might say in addition to that, repent and believe in the gospel. Ashes also symbolize, in this case here, grief that we have sinned and caused division from Allah. And ashes always come after a fire. So the ashes to them has this great significance. As Muslims, we have the 30 days or less of Ramadan fasting. A lot of people tell us, how can you fast for 30 days and blah, blah, blah? Subhanallah haq. Do you know that the 40 days that precede Easter initially were fasting days for the Christian? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about these 40 days when he spoke about Musa. He said in Surah Al-A'raf, that is the Surah number 7, Ayah 142, And we set an appointment with Moses or Musa for 30 nights, and extended them with other 10. And his Lord's term was completed as 40 nights. These 40 nights is what precedes the Easter celebration. As I mentioned earlier on, the Ash Wednesday starts the Lent period of the 40 days. This is time where practicing Christians fast, or due to a manipulation of the text by the church, what they said is you take your favorite food and you quit it for 40 days. Or let's say, for example, you love chocolate. You will quit chocolate for 40 days. But if you can't quit chocolate, then you will donate charity. And that charity, you put it in a pot and at the end of the 40 days, you give it away. And no, nobody cares about these 40 days. It's uh, unlike us, Ramadan, you gotta fast it. You fast it and you fast it, except if you are sick and you know the rulings. But in any way, the fasting period that the Christians observe for the 40 days 
It was when Jesus went into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days as well. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he gave us in Ramadan about 29 or 30 days, Allah made it easy for us that we fast far less than the 40 days. In the Easter celebration, if you have noticed, we also have the egg. The egg in Easter is a symbol of Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. Eggs are also seen to represent spring and celebrate, as I said in the Passover, the rebirth and the reinvigoration after the harshness of winter. So obviously, my dear brothers and my sisters, the marketing machine here in the West will take the opportunity and roll its sleeves and work very hard at luring people to spend their hard-earned cash on bunnies and eggs. But as I said again when I spoke about the eggs in the Passover, it holds the same meaning. The reason why you see all these big eggs is because an egg just hatches and you get a new life. And Jesus came from the grave and he hatched, so to speak, the grave like an egg. And a new life is given to a small little tiny bird. So please, 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 please pay attention to this act here. So the question here begs to say, can you give an egg as a gift to a Christian? And the answer is no, you cannot. Because we Muslims, it is okay to differ with people, to disagree with people on a belief. I don't believe in, in what my neighbor believes in, that Jesus is son of God. I don't believe in it. And I don't accept it, but I agree to disagree with them. So I'm sorry, I can't give you an egg as a gift because it goes against my own belief and I can't take an egg from you. Well, if they give it to you on that day, just so that you don't spoil the atmosphere, take the egg. But later on, let them know that that is not something you usually do. And there it will get on your tricks and tactics on how to convey the message to them without hurting their feelings. But at the end of the day, the egg in Easter is a symbol of shirk. So we must avoid it altogether. Don't give it and don't take it. However, do not, do not, do not insult their celebrations. One, two, do not spoil it. Do not cause them problems. Respect what they do even if you don't accept it. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said at the beginning, he created us to have difference of opinion. I am not obliged to accept what you believe in, and you are not obliged to accept what I believe in, but what I believe in and what you believe in should not be the source of our animosity. Instead, we can put aside our differences and act on humanity. So my dear brothers and my sisters, one more time, do not buy the eggs in Easter. Leave the time when it goes out, when the celebration finishes and you want to uh, eat them, eat them. But don't do it in the festive because that is what symbolizes their practice. Now let me go now and jump to the Easter's bunny, the rabbit. And why is it there? Well, as it turns out, the Easter bunny can be blamed on the German. It is them who brought it when the Germans, like 350 years ago, when they migrated from Germany to the United States and settled in Pennsylvania, it is them they added it to the celebration. Originally, it was an Easter hare, like it's kind of a rabbit. It's very, very fast running rabbit with long legs. It, it is of the family of the rabbit, but it is not the bunnies that we see today. Now, bunnies are nowhere to be found in the biblical scriptures. They were incorporated into the mainstream Easter tradition, as I said, in the 17th century in the United States, and then from there it propagated around the world. Many Christian scholars today believe it stems from a pagan ritual. And here is the story behind it. The pagan festival Estre, or E-O-S-T-R-E. -E. This festival is dedicated to the goddess of fertility, who is often depicted as a bunny. If you go to Playboy, the magazine, the, the, the nude magazine for guys, the logo is a bunny. If you go to uh, uh, laundry stores like... Uh, Ann Summers and Victoria's Secrets and I don't know the other ones, you will find the rabbit in there as well. 
So what is the secret behind the rabbit and why is it in Easter? Well, there is a world coined phrase that everyone knows the meaning of and aspires to copy. When we speak about sexual intercourse, people would say to go at it like rabbits. And that is because rabbits are often associated with high fertility. And I will tell you some facts about them and you will understand why Mr. Rabbit, why Bugs Bunny in the Easter celebration. It is also worth noticing that the Easter celebration deals with the resurrection of Jesus, as I said earlier on. And the rabbit gives life and he is the top of life givers. And as I will tell you here, babies, production that is. And that ties very well with the Bible as Easter celebrates, as I said, the rebirth of Jesus following the alleged crucifixion. Here are some facts about the rabbit that will help you understand. Number one, they have lots of babies, up to nine, between nine to 12 babies per year. Not one, it's nine to 12 babies per year. Number two, there are about 50 kinds of rabbits. Number three, Rabbits have babies every month. A mother doesn't have masses. The female doesn't have periods. Number six, the female rabbit can get pregnant as she is about to give birth to her babies. They don't have time like, oh, I'm pregnant, I can't get uh, pregnant again. Well, no. Even if she is about to give birth, if the male uh, approaches her, she becomes pregnant and as soon as she delivers this first budge, she gets ready for the next one. This is why if you want to have uh, many uh, animals in the house, many pets or many things that produces fast, Bugs Bunny is your best team player. Get him and get him Mrs. Uh, Bugs Bunny and you will have plenty uh, bunnies within a year. Number six, a male can mate with a female between three to five times per week, sometimes twice a day or more. The average gestation i.e. from the baby conceiving to the delivery, takes only about a month, 30 days. That's all it takes for a rabbit. Number eight, when the Pope Francis was in the news, he left a message to the Christians and he said to them, do not breed like rabbits. So that gives you an idea, even the Pope holds that belief. Number nine, the average rabbit reaches sexual maturity between the age of three months and eight months. Then he spends nine to 12 years enjoying sex, no end. This is like, <laughs> subhanAllah. Number 10, rabbits are heavily used in the sex and adult industry. So much so today, even if you wore a t-shirt with a rabbit on it, anyone that says it will think about sex. To wrap up this uh, little talk here about Easter and Passover, according to Christian history, these are my final closing thoughts here. According to Christian history, the celebration of the birth of Jesus, son of Mary, and also known as Christmas, started around the year 300. So in the first 300 years after the ascension of uh, Jesus, السلام, nobody celebrated nothing. It's 300 later, 300 years later, that this Christmas and Easter started being celebrated. Christianity changed massively when the Roman Emperor Augustine, later given the title of Saint Augustine, became Christian. He requested that all his people become Christians. The people loved their new ruler and were glad to follow the Christian beliefs. Soon, it became obvious they did miss their pagan holidays, especially the winter and spring festivals. In the winter, they used to have a festival to honor the gods of winter. In spring, they used to have festivals also to honor a goddess. That goddess is Esther. And Esther is a goddess of fertility, and for fertility you need sex, now you can add one to one. Back to our friend Augustine. So he wanted his people to be happy with this new faith and enjoy it. So on the suggestion of his mother, he declared that winter festival would be celebrated as Christmas, i.e. the birth of Jesus, son of Mary. And spring festival, that is in April, would be celebrated as Resurrection Day. And also, at the same time, celebrate the goddess Esther. And that is how the bunny got 
tangled with the Easter. So as you can see now, my dear brothers and my sister, that the Easter is a celebration about the resurrection of Jesus, السلام, son of Mary, according to the Christian dogma. And also there is another important thing that shows us that England is a Christian country for those people who still keep insisting that the true Christians of today are not like before and all that kind of stuff. So my dear brothers and my sisters, now educate your children, educate yourself, and know that in these days, people are celebrating something that absolutely we have no nothing to do with it. However, as I said before, we must not degrade, insult, or do anything to insult what they believe in. Recently, some people have exploded some bombs in Egypt, in churches and things like that, and this is an atrocious, horrible thing. We do not kill people. Allah well, Adim, this is like a big shame. These people have made us have turned Islam into a blood-making machine, when in fact it is not. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to curse anyone who causes a civilian or an innocent person to die, and subhanallah, they blow them in a church. These people were worshiping Allah. You disagree with them, that's your point of view. But you've got no authority, no right at all to take the life of a human being without permission, and nobody has given us the permission to take any lives. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all, to help us understand our religion. I kept the things tight and just like a fact for you. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to guide us all to the right path. Please do not tell people happy Easter or all that kind of stuff because it's just not our cup of tea. If someone says happy Easter, you say thank you very much. I appreciate that. And that is that. Nobody's going to tell you why didn't you tell me happy Easter. Okay? So if someone says to you happy Easter, say thank you very much. And you don't have to say it to anyone at all. People, as a matter of fact, don't even care about it. You say it or you don't say it. And it has become more of a family reunion. And the churches are working as well and things like that. But at the end of the day, these people are doing their best to worship Allah. And if we Muslims were acting according to what Allah told us in Islam, in the Quran, if we behaved the way we should have behaved, so many people wouldn't be celebrating Easter because they would have found out that they can do better than that. But since we have become a lazy people and we are just here to criticize people, we should not, we should not, we should not do anything that is harmful to mankind. Live and let other people live. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all, bless you and your family, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and gather us all in the Firdaus Al A'la. If you want to join my group on WhatsApp, please do send me a message on 0044 You have a wonderful life. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu.